Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Savannah and if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. In today's video, we're going to talk about what it means to truly repent. This is important because Jesus often connected this concept to our salvation and the kingdom of God. In Luke chapter 13, he says twice, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. In Mark 1, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance is an important theme throughout the New Testament and the Old, and therefore we should maintain a biblical understanding of what it means. First, I want to explain what it is not. Repentance is not asking for forgiveness, confessing your sins, saying you're sorry, or feeling bad about sin. Now don't get me wrong, true repentance will often result in these things, but this is not actually what it means to repent. The Greek word for repentance is metanoia, which means to change one's mind. But I want to make it abundantly clear that this is not just a mental decision or an intellectual judgment, but metanoia has to do with the changing of one's mind with respect to one's behavior. We really see the biblical meaning of this term when we look at the Hebrew word for repentance, which is teshuva, and is derived from the verb to return. So biblical repentance is not just feeling regret or remorse or even a mental decision, but its meaning is deeper in that this change of mind results in a change of behavior. Biblical repentance is a turning away from yourself and turning to God. Paul explains this point in Acts chapter 26. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. And John the Baptist says something similar in Matthew chapter 3 when he tells the crowds to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Repentance is not a work, but it will result in works. Similar to how faith is not a work, but James tells us that faith without works is dead. And not because faith is rooted in works, but because true faith results in the fruit of works. Works are the evidence of true faith and repentance. On the flip side, we can identify false repentance in the same way we can identify New Year's resolutions that just don't stick. Your actions will always prove what's really governing your thoughts and desires. And the biblical call to repent is a call to turn away from being controlled by your lustful desires and instead turn to God. One of my favorite parables that Jesus teaches is the popular parable of the prodigal son. In this story, we gain insights on the human condition and the essential message of repentance, forgiveness, and redemption. Starting in Luke chapter 15, verse 11, we read, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I will perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. 
For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. This beautiful story is so telling of what Jesus means when he calls us to repent. In the beginning of the story, it's clear that the son has his mind set on living recklessly. Hence, why he asks for his inheritance early and then proceeds to leave home and spend all of his money on this lifestyle. Well, when unfortunate circumstances arise and he finds himself wishing he could eat the pig's food, he clearly changes his mind and regrets everything he did. And then what does he do? Does he stay there in his misery, cry, and feel sorry for himself? No, he got up and returned to his father. This is what true repentance looks like. And this story depicts what really happens when we turn away from ourselves and turn to God. He welcomes us with open arms and celebrates. One more point is that repentance is a gift from God. We can't make this happen on our own, but God can give it to us and he wants to. 2 Peter chapter 3 says, Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. If you truly want to abandon your sinful desires and turn to the Lord so that he can give you his desires, humbly approach his throne and ask him for it. If this is really what you want, he will give it to you. And not because you've earned it, but because it aligns with his very own will and because he is rich in mercy. Well, that's all I have for today's video. I thank y'all so much for watching. I will see y'all in my next video. And as always, don't forget to thank God for waking up this morning.